Hey there, sheet pan meals are some of my all-time favorite meals to feed to my family just because all you have to do is throw everything onto your pan, bake it up, and then you can put this on your kitchen table. It really is that easy. I hope you enjoy it and let's go get started. We're going to begin today with these mini mozzarella stuffed meatloafs and they're so amazing. I have about a pound and a half of red potatoes right here. I cut them into smaller bite sized pieces. I brought the potatoes over to this large bowl and I added them right in there. Next I'm adding in a 12 ounce bag of frozen green beans or you could use fresh green beans. Frozen are just a little bit more affordable right now at the grocery store. I also added in two tablespoons of olive oil with a dash of pepper and salt. I gave this a really good stir and I do want to mention if you want to use other veggies for this recipe you certainly can. I set our veggies to the side. We're going to work on the meatloaf mixture now. So I added in this bowl a pound of ground beef along with one egg. Next add in two-thirds cup of Italian style breadcrumbs. I like the Italian style breadcrumbs compared to like the regular breadcrumbs because they have more flavor. Then I added in two tablespoons of ketchup, a tablespoon of minced garlic, followed by a tablespoon of yellow mustard and a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then for the seasonings, just a teaspoon of onion powder and a dash of pepper. I gave this a really good mix. I mixed mine with my meat masher or you can mix it with a spoon or your hand. I have my sheet pan here and I lined it with aluminum foil. Now I'm spraying it with plenty of nonstick spray. Then I grabbed our vegetables that we made up earlier and I just dumped them onto my sheet pan. And as you see, I'm spreading them out to the best of my ability right now. Next, I grabbed our meatloaf mixture that we made up earlier. And then I grabbed our cheese. So I have about five ounces of mozzarella cheese right here that I cubed into smaller pieces. This is what we'll be stuffing our mini meatloaf with but I made a total of five mini meatloafs for this recipe. I just grabbed some of that ground beef mixture, kind of formed it into a meatloaf and then I stuffed it with a couple pieces of the mozzarella cheese. You want to make sure the mozzarella cheese is covered with the meatloaf mixture just so it doesn't spill out onto the sheet pan while baking. But now that we have all the meatloafs on my sheet pan, I put about a tablespoon more ketchup on top of each of the mini meatloafs. This will give it some added flavor. Then I brushed it on. This baked in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 25 to 28 minutes or until the ground beef was cooked through. Seriously, you guys, even if you're not the biggest meatloaf fan in the world, I still think you will love this one. The mozzarella on the inside just sends this meatloaf out of this world. And then those vegetables on the side are perfectly tender. This meal is 10 out of 10. Now we're making these phenomenal marinated pork chops and vegetables. So into this bowl, we're going to be making the marinade first. So add in about three tablespoons of chicken broth, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, four tablespoons of ketchup. Use any type of ketchup you like or have on hand. And then two tablespoons of brown sugar. Give this mixture a really good whisk. Just for easy cleanup in the end, I'm marinating my pork chops in a large gallon size Ziploc bag, but you could marinate your pork chops in a big bowl if you'd like to. I added my four bone-in pork chops into the bag and then I poured the sauce all over the top of the pork chops. If you'd rather use boneless pork chops, you can as a substitute. And then I'm going to give this a really good shake and I like to let this marinate in my fridge for like eight hours, pretty much all day, but if you don't have time to let this marinate for eight hours. You could do 30 minutes or you don't even really have to let it marinate if you don't have time. I totally understand, but I have my sheet pan lined with aluminum foil. I'm going to be adding about a pound and a half of red potatoes onto this sheet pan, and I'm also adding a couple cups of fresh broccoli florets. I'm going to spray them with a little bit of oil spray, or you could drizzle with some olive oil. Then I'm seasoning them with salt and pepper, but you could season 
season with any seasonings that you enjoy. I kind of gave this a stir to let those veggies get coated in the oil and the seasonings. Dump those pork chops right onto that sheet pan and kind of spread them out so they're not overlapping each other. And if you have any extra marinade in your bag, just pour that marinade out over the vegetables for some added flavor. This baked in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 18 minutes. And then I broiled this for an extra three minutes at the end to kind of caramelize the sauce. These pork chops have so much wonderful flavor. Even my little toddler enjoys this recipe. I really need to be cooking with pork chops more often. Sometimes I forget how budget friendly they are and how delicious. Now we're making this orange chicken. So to get it started, we're going to cut up our veggies first. So you're going to want to slice one bell pepper, any color into smaller pieces. I forgot to get a bell pepper at my grocery store, but I had some of these sweet peppers on hand. So I used those instead. And then I cut one head of broccoli into smaller pieces as well. Now to work on the orange chicken sauce. In this bowl, I added in a tablespoon of minced garlic and a tablespoon of minced ginger. This is the ginger paste I used it makes adding ginger to recipes really easy. Then I added in a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, a dash of pepper, and a dash of salt. Next, add in a fourth a cup of orange juice. I had these cuties on hand, so I just added in some of these little tangerine cuties. I added in two whole cuties, so it was about a fourth a cup of that orange juice. Next, add in a third a cup of honey along with a tablespoon of low-sodium soy sauce. Give this a whisk. Now I'll be pouring the sauce into a large Ziploc bag, and if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's just because I like to let the chicken marinate in the sauce for a little while. I think it gives it added flavor. But then I added in a pound and a half of chicken tenderloins, and I gave this a shake. If you don't have time to let this marinate, you could just cook it up right after you coat the chicken in the sauce. But something else you can do is before work in the morning, you can make up this sauce and let the chicken marinate all day while you're at work. I pulled out my sheet pan, lined it with parchment paper, I added my veggies, and then I sprayed them with a little bit of oil spray, and then I seasoned them with pepper and salt. I gave the veggies a little stir to get coated in the oil and seasonings. Then I grabbed my chicken, and then I poured it right onto my sheet pan, and any excess marinade in the bag, I kind of just drizzled it over the veggies. I gave this a stir so the chicken wasn't overlapping, and I baked this in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 22 to 25 minutes or until the chicken was cooked through and here's the finished product that chicken has the perfect amount of sweetness and orange tasting flavor it is just so so delicious and then those veggies are cooked up perfectly I like to serve this alongside of cooked up white rice and I sprinkled everything with a little bit of red pepper flakes now we're making these seasoned chicken strips. So to get them started, I have about two large chicken breasts right here. I'm going to cut the chicken breasts into smaller strips just like this, or you could use chicken tenderloins if you'd like, but sometimes I like to just cut my chicken breasts into strips. You could always use more or less chicken depending on how many people you are cooking for, but now we're going to season up my chicken. I'm just using this Kinder's Golden Roasted Chicken Seasoning. I found it at Walmart and I actually thought it was really good. This was my first time using it, but you could use any type of chicken seasoning you like. I seasoned this chicken generously with it and then I pulled out my sheet pan, lined it with parchment paper, you know, just for easy cleanup, and then I placed my chicken right onto my sheet pan. Now we're going to be adding our vegetables. So for the veggies, I'm using two cups of cherry tomatoes. You could always use different vegetables if you'd like to make this recipe your own. Then I added two large carrots that I sliced and about 12 ounces of frozen green beans. I'm going to season those veggies with a little bit of salt, pepper, and then I added some of that chicken seasoning over the vegetables and it made them taste really good. I gave them a stir and then I baked this on 400 degrees for about 25 minutes or until that chicken was cooked through.
Here's what dinner looks like. This is one of those sheet pan meals that you could easily meal prep just because the leftovers are just as good as cooking it the same day. And you can make different variations of this by adding different veggies or subtracting veggies or adding different seasonings. Now we're making these stuffed bacon wrapped chicken breasts and oh man. So to get them started, I have a fourth a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese right here and a fourth a cup of mozzarella cheese. I added into this bowl. Next, I added in three tablespoons of softened cream cheese. For the seasonings, I added in a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Next, I added in a dash of pepper and salt. I gave this a really good stir so these cheeses were combined well. I have my three large chicken breasts right here and I slice them in half horizontally. And as you see, I didn't go all the way through while slicing them in half. I kind of just created a pocket. Now we're going to be generously filling each of the chicken breasts with some of that cheesy mixture. This is my favorite part. Now that all my chicken breasts are stuffed, we are going to be wrapping the chicken breasts with bacon. I'm just using regular bacon and I used about one to two slices for each chicken breast. Just gauge it depending on how big your chicken breasts are. Now moving over to my sheet pan that I have lined with aluminum foil, I have about two to three pounds of russet potatoes right here that I cut into wedges. We were feeling like wedges on that night, so that's why I did that. And you do want to make sure you use russet potatoes for this recipe, just because they will hold up better than red potatoes or golden potatoes. I added a little bit of pepper to the top of the potatoes. You don't need to add oil because the bacon provides plenty of oil. Then this baked on 400 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes or until my chicken was cooked through. And here's the finished product. Cooking your chicken like this and stuffing it ensures that it will not be dry in the end. And we like to dip our wedges in a little bit of ketchup. That chicken is not your normal chicken. It's so good. And then I served it with a side salad with tomatoes, broccoli, and a little bit of celery. And this ranch is super good. I definitely recommend it. I hope you found a yummy recipe for yourself today and I have plenty more videos like this on my channel so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.